Welcome to Fridays with Coco. This week through the ecumenical prayer cycle, we will pray for people who live in Kenya and Tanzania, right around this part of Coco's beach ball globe, by praying for the people there this week, and people in other countries in other weeks, we will pray for all of God's people in one year's time. Let's begin with a reading of Exodus chapter 4, verses 10 through 17. Moses asked God, suppose the people do not believe what I say. God said to Moses, what is that in your hand? He said, a staff. God said, throw it on the ground. He did, and it became a snake. Then God said, reach out your hand and seize it by the tail. He did, and it became a staff again. Then God said, put your hand inside your cloak. He did. And when he took it out, his hand was withered. God said, put your hand back inside your cloak. He did. And when he took it out, it was restored. God said, if the people will not believe you or heed the first sign, they may believe the second sign. If they will not believe either sign, you shall take water from the Nile and pour it on the dry land, and the water will become blood. But Moses protested, saying, I have never been eloquent. I am slow of speech and slow of tongue. God said, Who gives speech to humans? Who makes them mute or deaf, seeing or blind? Is it not I? Now go, and I will be with your mouth and teach you what you are to speak. Moses protested further, saying, Please send someone else. Then God, angered by Moses, said, your brother Aaron can speak fluently. Even now I am sending him to you, and when he sees you, his heart will be glad. You shall speak to him and put the words in his mouth, and I will be with your mouth and with his mouth, teaching you both what to do. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You heard it here. We have heard. And we will tell the story, even if our goggles fog up the way mine are, but that's okay. Coco, of course, has written a poem for you, and the title of her poem is Rainbow Tears. There's something sacred about grandmothers and the things we believe they can do, amplified by fond childhood memories from years past, and I don't mean just a few. It's part of the nostalgia we experience when thinking of anyone we love quite dear, triggered by many different smells, sounds, or traditions we carry on year after year. I love to boast about my grandma's kitchen, where things she was always making, like a delicious tomato sauce for spaghetti to go with the bread she was baking. I was convinced she created the best tasting cookies or most savory chicken pot pie, the smoothest gravy, most comforting soups, or sweetest apple pie a mile high. Helping grandma was always fun, and I believed her life was easier because of me, not learning until years later that she could have done it herself much more easily. I happily kneaded the bread dough while skillfully decorating the floor with flour. But when it came to cutting onions, she politely took over without showing a glower. The first time this happened, I wasn't quite ready for the hidden onion surprise because never before had I seen rivers of tears flowing so profusely from her eyes. She said that someday I would learn in school that these tears didn't mean she was sad, for cutting onions always makes us cry, something that's not a measure of good or bad. Grandma was right. A day came when the teacher told us what to class we should bring. An onion, along with plenty of tissues, for all of us would eventually be crying. It all comes down to a natural substance called sulfur that onions easily produce, taking it in from the soil and storing it up in their little liquid cells until it's set loose. All it takes is one jagged cut of the knife to start the tears a rolling while chopping, and those ah uh, not unhappy tears keep coming with no merciful sign of stopping. Suddenly, 
I had the idea that my beach goggles were the solution to this age-old fear. And I'll leave it to you to decide what I gave Grandma for her birthday that year. Well, I hope she had enough sight. I seem to have lost most of mine inside these goggles, so unless someone has an objection, I'm just going to take them off and set them aside. They're really handy, the beach for looking at fish under the water and things like that. Today is the first in a series of five videos in which we're thinking about strength for the journey, featuring one person each week who has overcome some kind of adversity or life challenge. Our featured person today is Fanny Farmer most known for her cookbook. Let's go to the BTW basket of onion recipes to hear more, much more. By the way, number one, my name is Cynthia and I'm from Massachusetts. You'll never guess what. Not only does my family have a Fanny Farmer cookbook that has been passed down from one generation to another, but I live in Medford, just outside of Boston, where Fanny Farmer grew up. I learned to cook from my mom, who said all of her children, girls or boys, should know how. I learned that many say the secret to a good beef stew is to use two onions instead of one. And Fanny Farmer would have been the first one to say we should do certain things to suit our own tastes. It almost goes without saying that life and learning go hand in hand. I learned from my parents, teachers, and listening to sermons. When I was about 10, the preacher in my church said something very important, and I know it was because she said it three times in a row. Always look for ways the Old Testament points to the New Testament. Here we are today with a passage from Exodus in the Old Testament, and as my parents would always say, don't try to win an argument with God. I think God wants me to tell my Jesus story to others. Especially in our modern world, though, it seems like I get a little bit hesitant and I don't want anyone to feel that I'm pushing a particular religious or theological viewpoint on them. But then I remember that Moses was a little bit hesitant or maybe more than a little bit. And God promised to give Moses the words. So, with my Jesus story, I guess I just need to be out there wherever I am. And whoever God puts in front of me, that's the one I'm going to be telling my Jesus story to. But using the specific words that God knows that person would need to hear to understand something from it. In other words... Some of these things are just a little bit out of our control, like onion tears. But I know my Jesus story will always be wonderful. So I think if I had some tears, they would be happy rainbow tears. Off and running, wouldn't you say? Beef stew. I don't smell any of that around here. But you never know, it's still early in the day. By the way, number two, my name is Charlie, and I'm from California. I go along with what Cynthia said about the beef stew recipe. Use two onions instead of one, because I do the same thing when I'm making meatloaf. If Coco had told us before we arrived last night that we were all going to be talking about Fanny Farmer, I would have brought my family's copy too. So I could show you the various notes different family members have written in it over the years. My Bible also has many handwritten notes in the margins. 
and one of the ones that is written right next to the Exodus reading we heard today is this. Note that Moses did not doubt God. It's just that Moses didn't have confidence in himself. I can hear my dad saying many times to me when I would talk about not having the confidence to do something, that's okay, I've got enough confidence for the both of us. He was right, and over time I found my own confidence. Isn't it interesting that just like onion tears, we can't just tell ourselves to stop crying or to stop worrying. We have to learn for ourselves. But with God as my helper, it always works out. I'm sure you agree with that as well. Okay. No, don't smell this one either. By the way, number three. My name is Ed, and I'm from Illinois. Here's one for you. When I was growing up, my family always had supper together. At six o'clock on the dot, and you better not be late. I was never a second late if we were having onion soup, because that was my favorite, and I didn't want it to get cold. When we sat down, we waited until everyone was quiet, prayed, and then we waited for mom to pick up her fork. Then we all began to eat. When I asked my mom where she had learned that from, she said, the Fanny Farmer cookbook. What? A cookbook? That's right. Fanny Farmer believed that good food needed to go hand in hand with good etiquette. I'm so thankful today, especially in our world of fast food and meals that are completely handheld. But I'll let you in on a little secret. Sometimes when I'm all by myself, I like to slurp my soup. I'm sure none of you do that. Okay, on to Exodus. I always have to remind myself that Aaron was the older brother of Moses, who could speak eloquently and to Moses might have been the better choice to be the spokesperson for God. In the end, God brought the two of them together, strengthening each other and strengthening their relationship. Jesus had a lot to say about how we are to have strong relationships by living in community, by considering all people to be our sisters and brothers, by helping each other. And that includes happy tears, sad tears, and even onion tears. And here we are at that place. How can we be at, by the way, number four already? And yet we are. By the way, number four, my name is Maggie Magoo, and I'm a registered nurse from Beaumont, Texas. As a nurse, I'm really conscious of what I eat and what I give to others, especially those who are ill or have specialized diets. Guess what? Fanny Farmer wrote another book, not just the cookbook, but another book entitled Food and cookery for the sick and convalescent. And that was back in 1904. But what a fabulous resource it still is today. You might guess by my name, Maggie Magoo, that I'm of Irish descent. So my ancestors have always loved corn beef hash. Now that I live in Texas, I make Texas hash, little different, ground beef, onions, green peppers, and lots of rice. Great comfort food. Anyway, I understand we are sometimes asked to do something we're hesitant to say yes to, but as a nurse in a hospital, I've learned that I've been trained and have a lot of natural skill and love for what I do. What I have to remind myself of is 
that there is only so much I can do. I only have to do my best. I think that's what God was telling Moses to do. Get out there ready to do your best, and I will do the rest. Have you ever heard or said these words before? If you would only stop protesting and do what I've asked you to do, you would have been done already. Well, I know that every day when I go to work at the hospital, I say a little prayer that God will give me whatever I need to be open and ready to respond because many times in my line of work, things have to be done stat. I'll say, you've heard that before. <laughs> mm. No, still don't smell anything other than the animals. By the way, number five, my name is Carl and I'm from Bakersfield, California. If you've ever driven through Bakersfield, there's one thing you'll never forget, and that's the aroma of the crops that are growing. It's really fun to go through after dark and just let your nose inform you what's growing on either side of the road. One minute you're smelling peaches, and the next, garlic. But my favorite is, I'm sure you've guessed, onions, because I happen to be the holder of my family's secret recipe for onion relish, which I make every year and can or preserve because I want to be able to eat it all year long. I've been hearing a lot of things today about the human condition, things we can't escape. And I'm certainly not willing to give up cooking with onions just because they might make me cry for a few minutes. Benjamin Franklin once said, it's common for people to give pretended excuses instead of one real one. That goes right along with what Moses was saying. And what did God do? Gave Moses three signs why God's power would be with him turning a staff into a snake, and back again, withering the hand of Moses and then healing it, turning the water of the Nile into blood when it hit the dry ground. God isn't just a boss, someone who will get her or his own way. God shows compassion in God's insistence. God shows patience and God shows perseverance. And why? Because all of us can learn to have these godly attributes in our own lives. God always has God's reasons, which in this case was something very simple. Aaron had the eloquent tongue, but Moses had the wisdom. Thank you one and all, and if you ever come back again, I hope you'll cook something so we can actually smell something by the time we get to the videotaping. The Fanny Farmer Cookbook. How cool is that? We've actually got one here. We've heard quite a few things today about Fanny Farmer and her famous cookbook and the recipes that are in it. It's interesting that sometimes we so associate a thing or an event with a certain person that we really don't think any more about them, some other aspect of their life. Fanny Farmer suffered a stroke in 1873 at the age of 16. She recovered enough to work at various jobs, but not strong enough to go to college. Her primary employment was helping young mothers take care of their newborns and other children. This is when Fanny took a great interest in cooking. Eventually, she was able to go to the Boston Cooking School, where she graduated at the age of 32, but then stayed on to be the assistant director and finally the director. Even with her physical limitations, 
she did not stop, eventually opening her own cooking school, but a very different one. The Boston Cooking School focused on people who wanted to become professional chefs. Fanny wanted to focus on ordinary people in their own homes. That's why her cookbook is not only filled with recipes, but tips on shopping, etiquette, and nutrition. Coco taught us in her poem, as she always teaches us something very important, about how the grandmother was happy to let the grandchild help out in the kitchen, except for certain things like cutting onions, at least until the grandchild could understand that the tears and discomfort are just a part of cutting onions. And the joy and anticipation of eating those delicious onions would be like the sun shining through those tears and creating happy rainbows, or as we said today, rainbow tears. It sounds like that grandmother had a wonderful sense of herself and her role in guiding a grandchild, building up confidence and knowledge a little at a time. God is great when it comes to letting us find our direction in our lives by trying new things, as long as we're willing to say yes. By the way, number six. All of us live like onions. We spend our time peeling back the layers of our years and our learning, finding new meaning, finding things that have been forgotten, adding other things peeling back the layers of the onion, going deeper with our understanding of God. Sometimes peeling back the layers may cause a few tears, at least momentarily. With onions, we know before we start to cut that we are going to have to offer some kind of complete surrender, even when we might be equipped with something like goggles. Moses worried about his speech challenges, and there is no drawn conclusion about what it meant that he had a heavy tongue. Some say that by this age of about 80, he simply lost his ability to speak Egyptian fluently and smoothly. Others say he was uncomfortable being a public speaker. The point is, God called upon Moses and gave him Aaron, the help that Moses would need. In other words, God is the one who has created us, and God is the one who has gifted us. So God knows what we can do and calls upon us to use those gifts, even if we haven't discovered them yet. Now, that's a rainbow promise with or without tears. For this series, we're going to be featuring some lovely piano pieces written by Fanny, not Fanny Farmer, but Fanny Mendelssohn. She was the older sister of a composer you may have heard by the name of Felix Mendelssohn. The song that we're going to play today is simply called Lied, L-I-E-D, a German word that means song. So it's just meant to be something really, really wonderful and tuneful. And perhaps if you heard it enough times, you would be able to hum it along. Here is Zoe, the snowy owl, who can not only keep an eye on the music, but can keep an eye on you, and can keep an eye on Fraser, and can keep an eye on Sydney. Basically, she is gifted enough to keep an eye on anything she wants to.
Let us pray. Gracious God, thank you for Jesus, the true light and true vine who connects us all, those we know and those we have not met. Thank you for the words of Exodus that help us understand that you always have a reason for calling on us because of a specific gift you've given us, like Moses, who had the gift of wisdom. As we show reverence for life and pray for all of your children and creatures, we give thanks that all of us are sisters and brothers friends, as Jesus calls us, friends, and we especially lift up those who live in Kenya and Tanzania, who you know each by name. As we continue to live during this time of pandemic, we lift up all with any health issues, all who are caregivers, and all who are transitioning from this life to the next, either alone or with loved ones. Thank you for giving us Jesus, by whose living, dying, and rising to new life assures us that we, too, are promised that new life. As faith-filled people, fill us with your holy gifts of hope, peace, love, and joy. God, for all that has been, we say thanks. For all that will be, we say yes. And we say thanks and yes in the name of the one who gave himself completely for us, Jesus. Amen. And may God bless you today.